Meanwhile, we have Jonathan Turley, Fox News contributor, George Washington University law professor, and constitutional law attorney. It is so great to have you in focus. You want to <laughs> talk about a hot seat. <laughs> Merrick Garland is in today, possibly the longest day of his life, just in terms of how it must feel. The, the hot points and the most important things that struck you so far. Well, it's what we expected. First of all, the substance of his answers uh, really doesn't exceed what you'd find in a Hallmark greeting card, right? It's just basically reciting the same line that we expected, uh, that this is all given to special counsel Weiss. There was one thing that I took note of, mm -hmm. and that is when he was asked whether, you know, when, when would these answers be forthcoming, he said they will all be forthcoming from Weiss. And then he added, when he submits his report to Congress. Now, that is significant because usually a special counsel will not submit the report until largely at the end of the investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, that would likely be after the election. It certainly could, would run beyond the impeachment inquiry. Uh, that's quite a significant statement if that's what he intended, because Weiss was scheduled to go before the House to answer questions. And it was right before that occurred that Garland made him special counsel. Mm. And many of us said that the impact of that could be that it insulates Weiss from having to answer these questions. The, the statement that he just made would suggest, unless he changes it in, in later questions, that he intends to answer questions much, much later uh, in the form of the final report given to Congress. So how would you describe that in terms of what Republicans are trying to do? Is that the ultimate block mechanism? Is it something else? This is going to get... Uh, very serious very quickly because this is not just an oversight question. Mm -hmm. You now have an impeachment inquiry uh, in the field. Part of that inquiry is whether there was an abuse of power, an abuse of office, uh, whether there was influence that benefited uh, the president's son. Um, if the attorney general is saying, we're not going to answer any questions until the issuance of a final report by the special counsel, that's not mm -hmm. going to satisfy Congress. They have to get answers as part of their impeachment inquiry. So this is going to set up a heck of a confrontation if that is indeed the intended meaning that uh, that answer had well, for the attorney general. And it better set up some fire, right? Because the American people need to know what they need to know before they vote. And if what you're saying is those very yeah. critical questions that have to do even with national security, whether or not a president, then Vice President Joe Biden, would have been part of a constellation, including his son Hunter Biden, where access was gained, where favors were done. What Congressman Matt Gates is so, what he said is so true. You don't give money. You don't do business with people anticipating that you'll get nothing in return. No one does business like that. Otherwise, it's called a well, favor is this... or a gift. And I don't know if you're doing gifts right. and favors with the places that were listed for those suspicious activity reports, China, so on and so forth. I, I don't know if we're in the business of giving stuff away as a country, then Vice President Joe Biden and his son. So if those allegations are not looked at before a voting public goes in November of 2024, what should that mean to the nation? Well, I think that is really the problem here. The polls show that the American people not only have uh, a record low of trust in the Department of Justice yes. under uh, Merrick Garland, uh, but they also believe the president was involved in these business arrangements. Now, we don't know for sure, but that's certainly the public perception. What the attorney general is doing today is only going to magnify those concerns with many in the public. And, you know, the, the backup argument here that is being put forward by many in the media is that, yeah, they were selling influence and access, but it was just an illusion. So the, what that means is they're saying that all of these corrupt figures were chumps that the Bidens fleeced, mm. that they thought they were buying influence and access, but they really didn't get it. Well, how do we know, right? That's the point of the impeachment inquiry. 
Now, what the what the attorney general's position here is is that you got to go ask Weiss, but then he suggested Weiss isn't going to give you any answers until the final report. Right. Well, that's not going to go over well with this with this Congress. Look, you, you said we don't know what happened between the president and his son and, and those 20 phone calls that have come into evidence now where Hunter Biden was on the line with business associates. The then Vice President Joe Biden was on the other end of that line, uh, reportedly, according to them, talking about the weather. And so until you can basically get the transcripts of those calls, the only evidence you have is that that's a lot of calls with your son, with foreign business people on the other end. And then you just take a look at the, the timing of the calls, who's visiting the White House then. You can start to put together a tapestry of things that you can overlay on what you know to be facts, but you're still going to know you're still going to need to know the texture of those phone calls, the words that were said. Well, your best time to get that is when people are feeling pressure. And you can bet Hunter Biden is feeling some pressure right now. Joe Biden feeling some pressure, very low in the polls, political pressure. But now, potentially, they won't be able to press in? Well, that's the, I think that the frustration of Congress is they are pursuing these questions. I mean, this business about, they just talked about the weather. They were on a speakerphone in Cafe Milano, one of the most popular places in Washington. It would not be a call where you said, okay, exactly what do you want me to give in a quid pro quo? Fair. The point of these calls for critics is that it's to show that the vice president at that time was just a call away. And what Gettable. the House is zeroing in on is what, right, which is also, you know, what Archer said was that on one occasion, these Ukrainians said, we've got to deal, do something with this guy Shokin, the prosecutor. And the response was, we're going to make a call to D.C. That's what the type of thing that the House is pursuing. Who did the call go to? Why did they, why did they make the call at that time? Five days later, uh, Vice President Biden had his famous ultimatum to fire Shokin. So mm -hmm. they have to pursue those questions. I am so glad you were with me today. And when they resume, huh. presume, uh, or rather resume the hearing, you and I will come back together. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.